Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and well, 2018 was actually a pretty exciting year for space discoveries and for scientific discoveries in general. So um, in today's video and also in the video that's coming out in the next few days, I'm going to discuss uh, pretty much the top discoveries of the year. I wanted to start with space specifically because it's just kind of hard to squeeze everything into one video. And also, I personally would like to just cover the stuff that got me the most excited. And um, this is actually really interesting because as I started making this video, there was a very recent announcement that we just discovered how Saturn's rings are, well, disappearing. And apparently, we think that we were wrong about um, rings around our planets, but I'm not going to mention this in this particular video because there's a separate video for this, but that's one of the discoveries. But we are going to start with, I think, the most exciting uh, sort of a thing happening in space of 2018. Not really a discovery, however, the definite, absolute, most mind-blowing thing to happen in 2018 related to space was, of course, this the live uh, stream from SpaceX directly um, of their launch of Elon Musk's Tesla and the famous by now Starman. Now this was actually um, more of a stunt than anything because they just tried to see if they could actually pull it off. But um, just the fact that this event captured the imagination of the entire world and this was actually the most watched stream ever i believe i think it beat all of the previous records youtube had um made this really the most exciting thing that happened this year it just kind of got the whole world together to talk about it to watch it to agree or disagree with elon musk to criticize him or to support him and um, I think that's kind of what makes this the number one event. And I wanted to start with this because I think we all agree this was pretty cool. But number two though is, is maybe not as exciting for general public, but it's definitely exciting for the scientific community. It was the discovery of an underground liquid water lake. Well, that's kind of difficult to see. Let me zoom into here a little bit. The underground lake that's located somewhere right here underneath the Martian surface um, essentially contained enough liquid water and most likely enough saline water to actually potentially at least uh, support life. Now this discovery was made by the European Space Agency and specifically by the uh, Italian uh, scientists of the European Space Agency who I'm sure are very excited to find it and to uh, talk about the possibilities of it actually possibly containing life. In other news, uh, the Parker probe, the solar probe that was launched uh, this year, uh, had its closest approach to the sun, basically establishing the new record, the world record for the closest uh, human-made object to the sun. But it's going to keep breaking this record for many, many, many years to come, because every single time it passes uh, closer and closer to the sun, it's going to bring uh, us closer and closer to its final destination that is going to bring it to I think just over 3 million kilometers away from the sun and thus making it officially the closest ever object um, that will allow us to study various effects from the so-called uh, solar atmosphere also known as the corona of the sun uh, that it's kind of meant to study. Now, for the most part, uh, this mission will probably keep on giving until it's finally finished in the next few years from now. Um, but for 2018, this was a pretty exciting launch and it definitely uh, made people ask a lot of questions about, well, what is it like so close to the sun to begin with? But at number four, we also have some sad news and specifically about two missions that came to an end in 2018. This right here is the Dawn mission that um, was essentially the first time ever we were able to launch a probe to both Ceres and Vesta. And it was also the first probe to uh, essentially change orbits from one object to another object and then to kind of uh, study both. And this was actually pretty incredible considering that if you go to our solar system and you find Ceres, which is right here, and then you take a look at the distance from Ceres to Vesta, you'll realize that it's actually pretty far. And so it was able to transfer itself from here to here and to then study both of these objects, uh, discovering some cool things on Ceres, including, of course, the water signs and also uh, some unusual interesting spots that you see right here. We still can't really explain them really, really well. Um, and most importantly, even discovering some organic molecules and stuff. 
And the second mission that came to an end in 2018 was this right here. The super famous Kepler telescope that discovered like a gazillion different exoplanets out there. Okay, like I guess 3000 something, not really a gazillion. Uh, but nevertheless, pretty impressive. And um, even though Kepler mission is officially finished now, it's actually been, been replaced by test mission that just literally started this year as well. But except for maybe one discovery that was made public, we haven't really heard much about it just yet. It's still collecting data and the data is still being analyzed. So I think 2019 is going to be a tremendously exciting year for new discovery of new planets and new objects out there in the nearby uh, interstellar space from, I guess, where we are. So in other words, we're going to discover quite a lot of new planets and specifically exoplanets, of course, in the region of about 300 light years away from the planet Earth. Okay, that was a pretty bad segue, but um, here we are back on Mars, and this is actually number five uh, most exciting news from space, and this is once again from NASA, and this was actually probably the most exciting mission for NASA, not so much for the rest of the world, but for NASA definitely, and this was the inside mission that, as you can see from the video here, NASA was super, super psyched about. They even had these geeky uh, handshakes that I wish I knew how to do as well, or had people to do it with. But the whole point is that um, this was an exciting mission for NASA because it's like they're back in the game again. They're doing things, they're uh, exploring Mars. However, I personally actually uh, made a video calling this possibly the most boring mission because they're not really studying anything exciting for the public. They're going to be studying uh, seismology, which is essentially measuring earthquakes or, or technically Mars quakes on Mars. And they're going to, for the most part, just study temperature. There's not going to be a lot of pictures coming off uh, this particular mission. And most importantly, the first thing they released was the sounds of Mars, which despite sounding really, really cool in uh, theory, turned out to be extremely unexciting for the public once again. And uh, actually, Scott Manley made a pretty interesting video about it. So if you haven't watched it, go check out his channel because he does explore this idea quite uh, quite well. Uh, but anyway, so the idea here is that NASA is back in business and this mission will hopefully help us discover what's happening inside the Martian crust underneath all of this somewhat rugged looking surface. Now, in somewhat unrelated news, uh, we also discovered the farthest object ever in our solar system. This is the object that's right here, known as Far Out, also known as 2018 VG18. Uh, and just a month before that, we discovered another interesting object known as Goblin. This was mostly because it was discovered around Halloween, and it did actually have extremely eccentric orbit, uh, most likely the most eccentric in our solar system. So in that sense, uh, what this suggests to us is that the search for Planet 9 still continues. We're going to be discovering new uh, exciting objects out there on the outskirts of our solar system. And this particular object here is ridiculously far away. It's 120 times more far away than Earth is from the Sun or uh, basically about four times far, as far away as Pluto is. So it's right there on the outskirts. And speaking of planetary objects, we also discovered a Barnard Star B. This is one of the closest neighbors to us, and this is actually a planet that's um, part of many, many different science fiction movies and uh, stories and books where it's mentioned many times. However, we didn't really know it existed until this year. It was actually finally confirmed this year, and we now know for a fact that there is actually, uh, well, a somewhat terrestrial-ish like planet out there around a nearby star. This is one of the closest stars to us, making this particular planet one of the closest exoplanets to us as well. And this year, we also have two different missions from two different uh, space organizations, specifically NASA and uh, JASA, or JASA, Japanese uh, version of NASA, uh, reaching their uh, destinations. We have the asteroid Ryugu and the Hayabusa 2 mission that's going to retrieve a part of the Ryugu asteroid and return it back to Earth. And this is actually the rovers that this particular mission is going to be using to explore the rock. And uh, it already even sent us a few uh, somewhat grainy images from the rock and there will be more coming in the next few months. So this particular mission is definitely exciting because it's going to once again return um, a piece of an asteroid or technically a piece of a, a rocky object that's orbiting the sun um, and bring it back to the planet Earth and we'll get to study and see what's in it. And uh, similarly, 
The OSIRIS REx mission from NASA is about to arrive to Bino asteroid and it's going to study it, it's going to analyze it, and then it's going to do a slight touchdown, grab a tiny uh, random pieces of this particular asteroid, and then return them back to our planet for more studies and investigations. Also, remember this? The uh, Tiangon 1 station that crashed onto our planet? This happened, I believe, in uh, April or was it May of 2018? And I made a video about it back then as well. And it actually luckily crashed right in the same area where normally we crash spacecraft anyway, the so-called uh, graveyard. Now, this is just one of the exciting things that happened for Chinese Space Agency. Technically, they didn't really have much control over this, but still exciting nevertheless. But they also recently launched a, a rover that was launched in December of 2018, and it's essentially going to land on the dark side of the moon, although technically it's not always dark because it does get sunny there, and um, explore the area, collect some samples, and report back to us. But as you can see, uh, this particular launch not as exciting as the one from NASA. A little bit too serious, guys. A little bit too serious. Anyway, so what is it that I kept for number 10 most exciting thing that we discovered this year? Well, um, it's the moons of Jupiter that we discovered completely by accident. We discovered 12 new moons of Jupiter. Jupiter now has a lot more moons. And a lot of them are actually uh, very, very different from the other moons. As a matter of fact, some of them even move in the completely opposite direction. This gives uh, the largest planet in our solar system 79 moons, uh, meaning that we're most likely going to discover a lot more, because these were discovered completely by accident. We were actually looking for a planet. We were not looking for these moons. They just happened to have appeared in the view. Uh, so yeah, that was an accident. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of 10 most exciting things that happened this year related to space. But there are a few things I wanted to put on the list, but didn't really mention. One of them, of course, is the um, things happening with the Indian Space Organization. And specifically, they just recently tested their first ever uh, human-based launcher, or basically an equivalent of an Apollo capsule or a Soyuz capsule. However, they didn't really test it with humans yet, but they are planning to launch their first actual human astronaut in 2022, so it's going to be an extremely exciting year for the Indian Space uh, Organization as well. We also had some exciting news coming from here, from Enceladus. Uh, the plumes that we discovered previously with the Cassini mission uh, may actually contain water and the organic molecules that are needed for life. And so this was a recent reanalysis of the samples that actually uh, was only published a few months ago in, uh, I believe it was early 2018. There was also news of the largest ever uh, Martian storm that we've seen so far. And of course, we lost contact with Opportunity rover that most likely had all of its solar panels covered with uh, Martian dust and is most likely now completely inactive. We still haven't heard back from it. Uh, it's been a few months now. And even though NASA still expects to hear something, maybe like a bleep or something, um, chances are the panels are too dirty to operate and thus the rover most likely has no energy left. There was also, of course, this bizarre news coming from the International Space Station where we discovered an unusual leak that was caused by someone drilling a hole in one of the capsules. And turns out it happened back on Earth when someone was building these capsules. I guess some idiot just didn't really know where holes shouldn't really be located. Anyway, so we still haven't really found who did this, but uh, that was something that happened. And lastly, one more thing that I wanted to mention but didn't really put on the list was the um, update of the exomoon uh, known as Kepler 1625b. This exomoon was actually technically discovered a long time ago, so that's why I didn't really put it on the list of um, most exciting discoveries since 2018. But we did have an update that I made a video about, and you can check it out um, in the somewhere above you. I think there's a thingy that's just popped up. And anyway, on that note, um, I personally think this was probably one of the most exciting years for space industry and for space exploration and for space discoveries. And it was definitely an exciting year for me as someone who makes videos about space because there was a lot of stuff I could talk about. Hopefully next year doesn't disappoint either. I really hope to hear more about uh, various international space organizations getting involved as well. And I'm really looking forward to hear what India is going to develop next year as well because their space organization is doing some crazy, crazy things. Anyway, on that note, hopefully you enjoyed this little list that I made and hopefully now you will remember 2018 as the year of space discoveries, exploration and just cool things like, come on, car in space, are you serious? 
this guy just put a Tesla in space. That's just insane. But you gotta love it. This is like one of the coolest things that happened in the last decade. Anyway, on that note, uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn more about... Well, actually, tomorrow I think we're gonna talk about the top 10 things that happen on Earth, not just in space. On that note, space out, and as always, bye-bye. Now, this discovery was made by the European Space Agency, and specifically by the Italian scientists of the European Space Agency, who I am assured were very excited to find it. That was the worst Italian accent, please don't do it ever again. <laughs>